What is going on fellow Gen Zers? Are you thinking about investing? Well, let me introduce you to the world of real estate. Real estate investing can be a game changer for you. I'm personally on the cusp of being a Gen Z, born in 1998, I just made the cut. And some of you might be thinking, well, I'm too young to even start investing in real estate. Well, here's why you should at least be aware of it and start thinking about it for your financial future so that you can set yourself up for success down the road. And a lot of people are gonna say, even if you're above 18, I'm too young to invest in real estate. That's for the older people who are rich and have money to spend. Well, I personally bought my first investment property slash house at 20 years old. So don't ever think that you're too young to go do it because it can be a life-changing decision like it was for me. And here's how you can do it too. So here's why you should look at real estate investing despite being a young person. So first, it's a tangible asset. It's something like a house or an apartment building, something that's actually physical, not just numbers on a screen like so many people do nowadays to invest their money. And of course, there's upsides and downsides with a tangible asset. Some of the upsides are, you have complete control over your asset and your investment. You can drive past it, you can fix it up, make it better, improve the property, you place the tenants, you get to control every part of that asset. Whereas if you were to just invest in the stock market, you don't have any control over that and it's almost not even as attached to you because it's just numbers on a screen. You don't actually have a, that physical attachment to it like you do when you walk into your own unit. And of course there's some downsides with this too. Being a physical asset, being a tangible asset, you actually have to take care of it. You have to do property maintenance and actually keep up with it so it doesn't run down and turn into a slum lord's house. Second, real estate can provide passive income for you. Imagine earning rental income every month while you focus on other endeavors and pursue your actual career and have this just working on the side behind the scenes for you. It is such a powerful tool. And of course you have to take into account for the expenses of the actual property and you have to pay those before you get to keep any money. But if you buy the right property and you're not living there and it's just your property for a investment, it should cash flow some bit. Of course, real estate's a long-term game and you're gonna see the payoff down the road. But getting that little, little bit every month is just something like to have some proof that your investment's actually working for you, making you some money. Even if it's just a little bit every month, at least you're making some passive income, some residual income that you know will be coming in. And keep in mind, the best part about this is each time you collect rent and you put that towards a mortgage, of course, you're going to have a little bit left over for some cash flow, but the stuff you're putting down to the mortgage, guess what? That's paying down your mortgage and creating more equity for you, which is creating more wealth for you overall. If you've gotten any value out of this content so far, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and back to the video. Third, real estate's a hedge against inflation. As prices rise, so does the value of your property. And it's a way to protect against your wealth in the long run. And again, real estate is a long-term game. So when home prices are going up, guess what? You're the homeowner. So your price and your value of your house is gonna be going up. Now, just because you have a substantial amount of equity in your house at a given period of time, doesn't necessarily mean you made a ton of money. It really depends on when you exit and what your exit strategy actually is because like you could be riding high and then the market crashes, all your equity disappears and now you're underwater. So just because you had the equity at one point doesn't necessarily mean you always will have that profit. It just depends when you actually exit, cash out and collect the profit. So again, remember this is a long-term strategy and always have the end look and your end goal in mind when you're investing in any type of thing, but especially in real estate. Now you might be thinking to yourself, I don't have the money to invest in real estate. Well, that's the beauty of this. You can start small. Consider house hacking. You buy a multifamily property, you live in one of the units, you rent out the remaining units, and you basically cut all your housing expenses and you could potentially even make some money or at least live for free while investing in real estate. And this is exactly what I did at 20 years old. I bought my first house slash investment property and I was living in one unit while renting out the bottom unit. And I was living in a house that I owned that I was paying down the mortgage every month for. And my personal expenses, since I had rental income coming in every month, was like 250 bucks to own a piece of property and just start building my wealth for down the road for my financial future. And the great part about this strategy is 
since you're living in the property, you're going to be using this as your primary residence. So with that, you get the opportunity to use primary resident type loans, which you could get into this place for as little as three and a half percent down with an FHA loan or 5% down with an owner-occupied conventional loan, which are both pretty reasonable costs. And then you can also have some state programs help you out with the down payment and closing costs and all that good stuff. So it's definitely something that you can probably get into for less than you're thinking. Or you could go down the road of partnering up with other folks. Now this one I have not personally done. And I do plan on doing it when the right flip opportunity comes, when I wanna fix and flip a house. I'll probably have to partner up with someone, mainly for money and for experience, just so that they can like show me the ropes. I probably won't get a huge cut of that deal, but that's okay, you're learning, so you can use it on your next project. And with this, the one thing I just warn you against is make sure you know who you're going into business with. Make sure you get the like documents written up the correct way so everyone knows their role, knows their cut of what they're gonna make at the end, and know who's responsible for what. Because if you don't, this is where real estate can go downhill very fast, and then you'll probably just hate real estate for the rest of your life. So let's not do that, avoid that, get the paperwork done correctly, and do this the right way, not the way that you're, oh, well, I kind of know him, he's done a couple things on his own, but you've never actually seen proof of the projects he's completed or the money he's made. So you might wanna actually know who you're going into business with. Because depending on your situation, you could be the person that's bringing the money to the table. You could be the person bringing the knowledge to the table. Maybe you just bring the boots on the ground and you're doing some of the hard work. Whatever that is that you're bringing, just know that whatever partner you want needs to have something that you don't bring to the table. So if you're bringing knowledge and boots on the ground, you need someone with money. If you're bringing money, you need someone with knowledge. So it's just how it works out. And then of course, write that out in paper so everyone knows their role. But before jumping in, make sure you do your research. I cannot harp on this enough. You're investing into a big thing, which is a house. No matter if it's a fix and flip opportunity, a rental property, whatever it is, it's a big purchase. So you should really know your financing options. Like I said, the 3.5% down FHA loan's a great one. An owner occupy 5% down conventional's a great one to work with. You should know your market. Know what rent is. Know how to run numbers so you know what type of return you're gonna expect if it's a rental property. If it's a flip, know Know how much your budget is, all that type of stuff. Know if you want to get property management down the road. It can be a lot. And if you want to learn more about those types of things, make sure to check out my playlist on real estate investing right up here in the top if you want to go watch some of those. I have a ton of videos on real estate investing. Because don't forget that knowledge is power, especially in real estate. So Gen Z, are you ready to unlock the power of property ownership? Are you ready to put your money into an investment property and let that start building super early in your career so you can set yourself up for financial success in the future. And remember, be patient. Any type of investing is gonna take time. Really anything in life takes time, but especially real estate investing, it's a long-term game. You're gonna see some payout when you start investing, but it's really that thing that just builds up and up and up over time, and then you kind of see the snowball effect down the road. So I appreciate it for watching. If it added any value, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any more real estate-related videos.